That is a house with a neon sign that said witch on it. <laughs> Sunday drive home. <laughs> oh, bomb, bomb. oh, I cannot believe how beautiful the texts were today. We had numbers with the story of the people complaining in the wilderness who, see how fast I'm going by the way? This is the interstate and apparently the thing said I'm going seven miles an hour. <sighs> so uh, uh, we were, numbers, oh yeah, the people were complaining and so the Lord said, you, oh yeah, you want kind of plane? How about some fiery serpents? Fiery serpents? That's dragons, I think. So the people had dragons eating them, and uh, and then they they said, "Oh, Moses, help!" And so Moses interceded, and the Lord says, "Here's his plan." He says, "I want you to make a bronze serpent and put it on a pole, and everyone who looks at it will live." <laughs> Which I just think, I just can't help thinking that. All the people are there getting gnawed on by snakes, little fireball snakes. And they go to Moses and he says, okay, the Lord told me what to do. And he's in his tent. Ding, ding, ding. ding. Well, Moses, what are you doing? Snakes are eating our face out here. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, don't worry. I got a solution. Uh, I'm making a bronze serpent. And the people say, we've got enough serpents out here, Moses. <laughs> we don't need any... We don't need any more. No, no. The Lord told me, I'm going to make a bronze serpent, and if you look at it, you'll be healed. And they say, that's the... Moses, <laughs> we need an antidote or a doctor or a snake bite clinic, and you're making a bronze serpent on a stick? That's ridiculous. But, but, you know what's more ridiculous is all the people who refuse to... I'm not looking at that stupid bronze serpent. I refuse. And then they die. <laughs> the serpent on a stick. This is how, I think you gotta think of it like, I mean, it's a reminder, no doubt, of the serpent with Adam and Eve at the tree. It's also, you know, in the ancient world, they would do this business, they would, they would, if you defeated your enemy, you'd put his head on a stick, on a pike. So here's the serpent on a pike. And it's a picture, we know, of the cross. That comes up in the gospel reading. But before we got to the gospel reading, then we had Psalm 27, the most glorious of psalms. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord in his temple. <laughs> and it says, though my enemies come on me to eat up my flesh. And you think, David, what kind of enemies do you have that want to eat up your flesh? Are you making enemies like with zombies? Who wants to eat your flesh? COVID, I guess, or, or zombies, or cancer, or cannibals. I, I don't know. But even if, so David's enemies wanted to chew on him. And, uh, and he says, I'm not afraid because I'm in the tent. <laughs> what, what kind of safety is that in a tent? I'm in the tabernacle. I'm safe in the tabernacle because it's the Lord's tabernacle. If the Lord's there, I'm safe. So even in, in this little tent, it's not the tent that protects you. It's the Lord. God be praised. And then we had the epistle. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10-ish, which has so many doctrines in it. That we're dead in our trespasses and sins. That's our doctrine of of decisionism, that monergism, that we don't make a choice to believe in Jesus and everything. It says you're born, you are by nature children of wrath, verse 4. Just think about that, children of wrath. That's your last name, is wrath. I'm, hi, nice to meet you, I'm Brian, wrath of God, deserver. <laughs> That's my family name. Until we're adopted into the Lord's name. What does Wolfmuller mean? Wrath of God? That's what every name means. Until the Lord adopts us into his own, and that comes up later. And then this great, we're seated at the, you gotta look at Ephesians 2. It's an amazing thing. It says that we are, we are seated in the heavenly places with Christ. 
So Jesus died, we died with him, Romans 6. Jesus is raised, we were raised with him, Romans 6. Jesus has ascended, we're ascended with him, Ephesians 2. And we right now are already seated at the right hand of the Father by faith. That's an amazing thing to think about. And then, by grace you're saved through faith, apart from works, so that no one may boast. And that, not of yourself, it's the gift of God. How glorious is that? By grace, not works. By faith, not works. Works are excluded. I mean, works are not excluded from the Christian life. Works are just excluded from justification, from the Lord declaring us righteous, to the one who does not work but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. His faith is accounted for righteousness. Romans 4. And then we're created in Christ Jesus for good works that were appointed beforehand. Whew, so we're predestined to do good works. That's Ephesians 2.10. That whole section is just loaded, loaded, loaded with theology. It's glorious. And then that's not even enough. Not only did we have the bronze serpent from Numbers and Psalm 27 and Ephesians 2, but then we got to hear John 3, 14 to 24 ish or something, that Nicodemus, for God so loved the world, text. If you weren't in church this morning, man, you missed it. It was something special. These verses. How do you even preach on this? It's just too much. So here's Nicodemus, one of the Pharisees, one of the Sanhedrin, even who later becomes a disciple of Jesus, secretly, but he was there with Joseph of Arimathea to take care of the body of Jesus after he died, which is something. But at this point, three years previous, Jesus is staying in Jerusalem with a handful of disciples and Nicodemus comes on the door at night. Can you imagine, you know, like Andrew opening the door and there's Nicodemus with his Sadducean or his Pharisean beard, his Sanhedrin helmet. Is Jesus here? Ugh. It's a famous, I mean, he's like a famous guy. He's on the top 70 famous list in Jerusalem. And he seeks an audience with Jesus, and Jesus tells him that he has to be born again, which is interesting. Because one of the very curious words in the most famous of verses, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever or whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. It's that, that word only that's in there, only begotten. That verse means that Jesus is an only child. <laughs> the Father begat, God the Father begat no other sons, no other children. The Holy Spirit is not begotten. The Holy Spirit proceeds. Jesus is the only begotten Son of the Father. When you say, now, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Bible talks about God having sons all the time. Like that favorite verse from 1 John 3, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we should be called the children of God, and such we are. Or Paul, who talks about we're, we're heirs of Christ, we're, joint, we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. It pleased God in bringing many sons to salvation. That we talk, the Bible, the New Testament especially, talks about the children of God all the time. How is it that Jesus alone is the begotten, only begotten Son of God, and yet we're also the children of God? The answer is, we are not God's children by begottenness. Remember Ephesians 2? We just talked about it. We're children of wrath. Our last name is not divinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our last name is devil. Like John 8 says, Jesus says to the Pharisees, you are of your father the devil. That's who begets us. We're begotten of Adam after his own image and likeness, not after the image and likeness of God. We bear the image of the man of dirt. So 
So that if we want to be children of God, we have to be adopted. Ooh, that's the key. So we're God's children, not by being begotten, but by being adopted. That's what baptism is. That's why we're baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Just like a person who has a, their born name, their family name, and then when they're adopted, they get the new name, the adopted name. So it is for us when we're baptized. <laughs> I don't think we think about this enough, the adoption that we have as children. Because, it's, because we become the... We become the children of God by being joined to Jesus. We, have, we share his office as the child of the Father. We're, we're begotten into Christ so that we're joint heirs with him, not apart from him, never apart from him. There, there's no children of God apart from Jesus Christ. But because of what he's done in his incarnation and birth and life and death and resurrection and ascension and all the works of salvation that he's done, because of what he's done there, there's a place for us to be part of the family of God. And we have it by faith, by grace. <laughs> I can't, can you believe it? So that, so that we get to be, even though Jesus is the only son, we get to say, hey, he's our brother. <laughs> and Jesus can say, when you pray, you know what you should say? You should say, our father. <laughs> Can you? It's all. It's just too good to be true. If if it wasn't written down by the prophets and apostles, you'd never believe it. Our Father who art in heaven, He's our. That's our Father. Yes, that's Jesus says that's my Father and also your Father. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's pretty cool. God be praised. Sunday drive. Uh, the Wednesday whatnot is how you can keep in touch. It's turning into the Saturday whatnot. But anyway, we're, I know that the Lutherans don't like change, so we're going to call it the Saturday whatnot that comes out on... No, we're going to call it the Wednesday whatnot that comes out on Saturday. We'll keep the name the same. <laughs> Wednesday, what not on. Anyway, wolfmuller.co slash Wednesday. That's how, to, that's how to sign up. See you there. You know what else? If you like the Sunday Drive Home, you'll love the Sunday Drive Home podcast, which is the exact same thing as the Sunday Drive Home, except without my face. You just get to listen to it. So you can find that wherever you find podcasts. Search for Wolf Mueller or Sunday Drive Home or something. Someone remind me, I'll put a link in the description, and then it'll be super easy. You just click on the link. And, the, and you're there and you're listening to this same exact thing, except for no pictures. Just podcast. You can focus. It'll be great.